Today I'll be demonstrating how to use colored pencils to um, make a, a person or an object look realistic and give dimension to them. I'm going to start with her pants here. This um, She is in shadow, so you can't see a whole lot of details, but I'm going to be enhancing hers her image just to kind of further emphasize that there is a light source. I'm making a decision that the light source is coming from the right side of the paper. So that means that my shadows, most of the hard shadows or core shadows are gonna be on the left side. So those are some details that you need to know right from the beginning. She's clearly wearing black pants, but what I'm gonna do is Instead of just going in with a straight black, I want to emphasize a range of value. And instead of doing straight black, I'm going to start with a gray. Anytime you're working with colored pencils, you want to make sure you start off with them nicely sharpened and ready to go. I'm also going to be blending multiple different colors on top of each other instead of just one color. My best advice for people using colored pencils that maybe haven't done so in the past is to kind of know ahead of time that you don't want to use just one color. I always have a rule of using a minimum of three colors, three different colors on one particular area that I'm working on. So then I am always remembering, you know, to get away from what, what we learned in elementary school where we just color things in. And that is most definitely not what I want my students to learn in this class. I want them to understand that, you know, sure, you could easily see that she has black pants and that they would predominantly have the color black in there instead of just black I'm going in with a gray just to emphasize that there is a light source and that light source is also going to help give dimension to the person and the object I'm also going on top with a lighter gray and that's also serving as a blender for me so I've had people that have asked, you know, how do I blend colored pencils? And it's usually a lighter color on top. Now, anytime I'm working with colored pencil, most definitely I can also go in with a little bit of a fine point marker, such as one of these right here with my final details to further emphasize small details. Let yesterday's demonstration, I emphasized a few different techniques, specifically the technique um, stipple, cross hatching, and hatching. So to kind of fit with our my theme for for all of the middle ground pictures in my carousel book, I'm going to try to um, use cross hatch in each of the images. So. You know, just kind of keep in mind that's something that you can do to really further emphasize. All right, now I'm starting to press harder. On the left side of the body where the, the colored pencil is showing the, the deepest core shadow of those pants. One of the mistakes I see people make when they're using colored pencils is they press lightly. If you're pressing lightly and you still see white paper through your colored pencil, as I can see in the area I'm pointing to right now, then you haven't effectively learned how to use colored pencils, in my opinion. There are many different artists that'll give you different ways to use colored pencils and different, you know, different types of media. I find it very, very helpful to explain that the best thing you can do with colored pencils is learn how to blend and to learn how to press hard. So right now you're seeing a range of value. You see a lighter value in the front here and then it gradually transitions to the darker color. Now I'm gonna layer a little bit more of this gray on top of the black in this area just to further emphasize that there is a light source and that the pants aren't just straight black. So I'm also making sure that I cannot see the white paper through my colored pencil. 
So my rule is minimum of three different colors per object. Will I go in with more? Most likely, yes. In this area, she's got a lot of shadows. And in the shadows, it's more of a reflection of the background, I guess. Uh, but you can see a lot of blue in the shadows. So in addition to the grays that I'm using for her pants, I'm also gonna go in with a little bit of blue just to give that um, kind of illusion of what you see in the picture, which predominantly has blue in it. So I added just a tiny bit of blue in there. I know you can't see it all too well. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. Move this back so you can see better. Okay, so now you can see I have a smidge of blue in there. I have grays and I have blacks. Now I'm going to work on the other edge of the dark pants. There's definitely a big shadow right here where the two legs kind of uh, change direction. So I want to make sure that I have that in there because that's pretty important. I don't want it to look like um, it's all one, um, it's all one shape. I wanted to show that this leg right here is in the front and that this one is kind of in the back. So those kinds of details are probably new for a lot of people to think about. Oh, I, I saw black pants. I would have just colored the whole thing black. Well, that's why I do demonstrations like this. So you can start to see the different details that, you know, that you need to pay attention to. Another tool that is really helpful to always have close by is a good pencil sharpener. I'm using just a regular pencil sharpener, handheld sharpener. Um, what I tend to do when I'm sharpening is I'm actually kind of holding it on an angle a little bit. I don't really need to sharpen the whole thing. I just want the tip to be a little bit better. So I'm gonna push that up against the blade inside here just so I can get a little bit better, a little bit sharper edge. Another good tool to have for colored pencils, and this is a sandpaper block. I can color on that sandpaper block and instead of, especially when you spend good money on a set of colored pencils, I'm using Prismacolor pencils, and I am using that sandpaper to sharpen the colored pencil. I don't really need to stick it in a sharpener per se, more or less just use sandpaper to refine that edge. Now, you can notice that I'm making marks that are changing directions. I am further emphasizing that her body is rounded, and obviously it's like contorted in a way where, you know, she's she's used, doing a yoga pose, and it is her body is t changing direction as opposed to this first leg that is going straight down. I'm trying to use the colored pencils to emphasize also that, you know, that the body has um, changed directions. So using hatching is also another good way to show information or direction of objects. And in this case, her body. So instead of just shading um, to the side or coloring the whole thing in, I am using hatching to help me emphasize the details that I wanna emphasize.
I'm just going back and forth with my different colors. I have those three different main colors of the pants and then a blue to go in and you know further emphasize certain colors. All right, that will complete the first video in the series of using colored pencil to add value and to create the illusion of depth and space. Um, you can also call this implied form.